Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that's about the only place they could hide it where you were sure nobody was going to go inspect and find it. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, I am uh, <clears throat> getting over my illness. That sucked so uh friday <laughs> friday night so uh, i had my game friday night and um mm -hmm. and i had mentioned that you know i had to go to urgent care that afternoon and mm -hmm. that i had an ear infection and all all of them had said oh well, i hope you're feeling okay and blah 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 and i said oh you know it's just an ear infection i they gave me some amoxicillin and sent me on my way and i'll just power through mm -hmm. i greatly underestimated the power of my illness <laughs> <And so, laughs> by about 8 30 i'm sitting there and i'm like what is this what is this feeling in my stomach what's going on and i'm like i'll be right back and i'm like am i gonna throw up what is this and so i ran to the bathroom and as soon as i got up and moved around i felt better and i'm like all right well you know whatever it must just be something weird must be having a reaction to the amoxicillin <clears throat> and so I come back and I sit down and by about 8.45, once again, I'm like, mm, and I'm fighting it and I'm fighting it and I'm fighting it. And this time it like, it felt like it was starting in my toes and working its way up. And I'm like, about seven or eight minutes before we would normally close up. I'm like, guys, I got to close up early. I'm going <laughs> to, I've got something to do. And, uh, oh my God, I have not been that sick in a long time. Um, there was no liquid left in my body. I, um, wow. Yeah, it was unpleasant. and uh, But I had no other symptoms. I had an earache and explosive vomiting, but, like, no no fever to really worry about or, you know, other than, other than stomach pain and vomiting, that was it. And so, okay. I don't know. I That's weird. It is That's weird. a different set of symptoms. Well... I don't know. I talked to my doctor about it. He's like, because <laughs> I told him, I said, so stupid me, I started Cosentix for my psoriasis that day. And, you know, every single TV commercial, if you have an infection, don't start Cosentix. Didn't uh -huh. even dawn on me. <clears throat> and so I took the Cosentix and then like two hours later, I'm like, you know, this earache that I've had for three days feels like it's moving into my tonsil. I should go to urgent care. And so <laughs> It didn't dawn on me to do that before I took 300 milligrams, two pens of Cosentix. No, no, I got to I gotta do everything, you know, backwards. Mm. And uh, so I'm like, you know, maybe it was the mix of, you know, the Cosentix, the ear infection, and the and the, uh, the amoxicillin hit me all at once. And my, my system was just like, nope, everybody out. And he's like, yeah, that that could be a possibility. He's like, it, he thought it was really strange. I had no other symptoms, but I mean, I grew up with ear infections. I I between the ages of like four and twelve, I would have anywhere between, you know, four and ten of them a year, and uh, yeah, it, it sucked. So I know that every time you get an ear infection, or I get an ear infection, I get an upset stomach. I ain't never got one like that though. That was. That was a whole lot of fireworks, and uh, I was. Yeah, saying... so I'm sorry. So go since ahead. They, um, since they legalized pot, there's been like this weird recurrent like nausea, vomiting syndrome that people have been going to the ER with, and yeah, no fever, nothing. They just it, they they're vomiting like a lot, and like the only thing that makes it feel better is like a hot shower. Like they all have the same story. It's so weird. But it's like if they if they go down a little bit on how much pot they're using, like they're just fucked. Yeah, it's see, like really, really bad. <laughs> I don't smoke that much. In fact, if I <laughs> I, have, I have I have to be I have to be really careful about the stuff that I do get because um, evidently sometime between college and now I became a lightweight and um, like no. The pot they've been working on it like it cures cancer it's insane how strong oh, it is well like, yeah when i <laughs> injured my knee 
I went and I was like, oh, get, you know, thinking, oh, in college I could smoke an entire glad garbage bag of this crap. And so I went, I went to the dispensary and I told them, I said, I want the strongest shit you've got. And they gave me something called 10 Ton Hammer, which <laughs> is an appropriate name. And um, I can tell you, if you are really baked, do not put on the original Conan the Barbarian. And the reason, for, especially if you have a 70-inch screen TV like I did at the time, because Co the original Conan the Barbarian had a frame rate that was slightly off. It wasn't 30, it wasn't 60, it was like 27 and a half. And so it's weird. And uh, watching that sent me running for the toilet. And um, and it was the only thing, <laughs> it was the only thing to do that. But yeah, I have to be really careful. So if I if I get stuff uh, because I get it for my back and my knee and, you know, and it, it does wonders. It's way better than taking opioids or whatever. But I have since learned, I'm like, no, give me give me the weaker stuff. And, uh, yeah, so when I do it now, I, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, give me lemon flufflins. Give me something, you know, something for the tame people. Yeah, you have to, like, you have to smoke, like, a really insane amount of pot for this to happen to you, apparently. I mean, that just from what I've heard. But a brand new, a brand new type of nausea has been discovered. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, <Ryan. laughs> Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, I know the new stuff is quite potent, though. Let me give Corey another minute or two here. And Devin's doing his monthly meeting, so we'll see if he makes it for the second half. Okay. I'm not sure. All right. So, yeah, well, I... While you were sick, I was having fun in Connecticut this weekend at a game convention. Nice. Oh. Nice. That was fun. What games did you play? Um, Engine Thieves, where it simulates the Union raid into the Confederacy, where they stole an engine and headed back up tearing the tracks. Yeah, not a single one of my raiders made it back. That was bad. Uh, uh, Marori, where it's a uh, before the uh, Europeans showed up, the Marori <coughs> tribes. You play one fighting for control of the island. Oh, nice. Uh, one where you uh, explore the Pacific. I guess there's a Star Trek game where you use little things to uh, show which way you're going, and when you get the right number, you get to place a planet. Here, you place an island. Right. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, World War One airplane ace. I, I managed to live for six months, which is better than most of them before I died. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. No, I had fun. War game. It was war gaming convention, so nice. mostly war game. Yeah, that sounds like a good time. I wish we had more of those kinds of conventions here, but we don't. There's nothing near me. Well, I, there's golf conventions in Myrtle Beach. That's about it. Yeah, there's like. Nothing, nothing. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, PAX doesn't really count. It's PAX has morphed into something completely different. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, we don't have any gaming convention. We have quite a few game store. Well, I'd say quite a few. There's like four big game stores that have um, tables and whatnot that they either rent out or they they... A couple of them have hired um, game masters, but they want exorbitant prices to just sit at their table. And you know, when I was doing it, my and, and Cameron and uh, Carrie can vouch for this. My thing was after the pandemic, they wanted to raise the prices, and I'm like, dude, twenty three dollars a week is, is you're pricing yourself out of your customers. <laughs> I mean, that's that's just ridiculous. My other, my and my reasoning for that was I'm like you know <clears throat> he was like oh well you know we've got you know overhead and whatnot and I said but an empty table that's just sitting there generates nothing and costs you nothing it's well but it's just there <laughs> most of the game stores I've done they let you play at the tables for free because you're in there they sell soda they sell some sort of candy oh yeah he and he doesn't understand that <laughs> he did not understand that at all. 
But yeah, you know, whatever. Um, I think he he's learning that lesson the hard way um, with his rotate his revolving door of of gamers. But you know, such as it is. So I'm gonna well, let me. But I will go ahead and while we're waiting for Corey to message me back, I will go ahead and bring us in. <clears throat> Welcome to the Pirates of Drynax. Uh, we'll be picking up where we left off last week. Uh, the Travelers are on Corden. <coughs> Were they have uh, met with uh, Rafe Zentuli, who, um, if you're not aware of who Rafe is, Rafe is a uh, information broker and all-around ne'er-do-well, that uh, scoundrel, really, um, that uh, he has his fingers in many pies, and he has assets all throughout the Trojan Reach, and so he offered a way, or actually the Immortal Protector from Newman uh, sent him a good chunk of money to help the travelers make their problems go away. And so he has offered them um, false identities. Um, he is going to push the right buttons and put pressure on the right people to kind of um, lower the threat level of the law enforcement that is, um, you know, hell-bent on um, causing them grief. And so that, of course, will take some time. And in that amount of time, while they're on Gordon, his suggestion was, of course, for you guys to lay low and, you know, give it a couple of months and, um, you know, let the heat die down a bit. And so... <clears throat> He, in that regard, introduced you to Baroness Lux. And so Corden um, is an interesting place. Uh, there are three Barons. There is Baron Halley, Baroness Lux, and Baron Pharaoh. And uh, these three uh, rule Corden. And the funny thing about it is so... Uh, the population only lists around 2,000 people as the population of Corden, but it's much, much higher than that. Um, and the reason is that only people that are living inside the bar one of these barons' um, fortresses are counted as actual population. Everybody that lives in the towns and whatnot outside, they're not in Portland. They're, they're not important. They're, they're chattel. Um, they, you know... They're not real citizens. So <clears throat> it's a very weird situation. And Baroness Lux, being presently the most powerful, kind of wants to be the only Baron. And so she is offered to hire you guys to... Um, essentially, you guys are <laughs> being given this unique opportunity to play the CIA in Colombia. So <clears throat> her... The way she wants to kick this off is that she wants you guys to assassinate um, a tax collector in a um, in a contested area between Baron Halley and Baron Pharaoh, and that will set the two of them on each other because they won't know which. They'll assume that because the area is contested, it's one of or the other that assassinated this jerk, and. Of course, she wants you to do it as, um, you know, discreetly. Not discreetly. You can make as much of a mess as you want, but she doesn't want it traced back to her. And so um, that's kind of the situation that you're in um, or that you've been offered. And the reward for this, of course, is that <clears throat> originally there were many other barons on this planet. And so there are a lot of these fortresses, evidently, that are just empty 
And she's going to give you one of them with the surrounding towns and the tax collection and income that comes from that. So you would have your own little private fiefdom here on Corden. <clears throat> and she's also um, mildly interested <coughs> in joining uh, Drynax. Uh, and she's offered to a um, kind of a... A pact with Tech World, where Corden will su help supply Tech World with food, um, because really Corden is a breadbasket, um, and uh, right now a lot of their food and whatnot um, is going to the Imperium, and they're selling it to other worlds um, simply because. I mean, not that Corden is a protectorate, but um, they are. For the most part, they can be considered an imperial client state in that uh, the Imperium doesn't really give a shit what goes on here as long as Corden keeps their their spaceport open for trade because they are a, um, a gateway to the Trojan Reach. <clears throat> and so, uh, before we get started, we'd like to thank one of the friends of the Greenwater Guildhall. Uh, none of these are sponsorships or partnerships of any kind, and you will find links to all of our friends in the video description down below um, tonight we would like to thank uh, speechless bard speechless bard makes beautiful leather products for your tabletop role-playing games such as leather covers for your heart uh, for your hardcover uh, core rule books she has um, a dice rolling mat that looks like a spell scroll when you roll it up she's got this really cool thing called the dice compend or the spell compendium that is bifurcated one half is like a for holding a deck of cards the other half can be used for rolling dice and on the inside of the book cover is a magnetic um spell tr spell slot tracker uh, really really cool stuff um she does all of the customization work by hand and you can basically give her an idea of what you want and she will do her darndest to make it happen but i can tell you that she is an absolutely amazing artist um if you're going to order, especially now because uh, the holidays are coming up, you're going to want to get those orders in soon. Um, and you, you know, any other time, you want to give yourself a plenty of lead way because um, she is in the UK. And so if you're having it delivered to the US or Canada, it can take a while for it to cross the pond. If you are a fan of our Wednesday night Pirates of Drynax game, we do have a website via Obsidian Portal. And uh, that link, uh, the adventure log, is written in the manner of Traveler News Service articles. They deal with information coming in from all over the Trojan Reach, um, geopolitical stuff. Um, sometimes information from outside the Reach is going to be coming in. There's going to be... <laughs> I've already been looking ahead. Um, there's going to be some really uh world shattering big information coming in from outside the reach that could potentially affect everybody um but if you are a fan of that page please go to the front page and give us a thumbs up we do like to see the fan likes and we hope you enjoy it so <clears throat> how you guys decide that you want to go about this is really um entirely up to you but she tells you, uh, I mean, she, she really doesn't have any plan she, on how to, you know, commit this assassination. She tells you um, that, she tells you that Baron Halley and Baron Pharaoh are conspiring to make an attack on her. And she wants to head this off and have them kind of fight each other before that happens. And her hope is, is that they will kind of wipe each other out or weaken themselves to the point where um, she will be the one left in charge. And she gives you a little information on this this guy. Um, his name is uh, Josephus Agraki. And Josephus is a taxation assessment supervisor. And she says she she says it is it is not a uh, a secret that he is notorious for corruption and other rumored misdeeds um 
she tells you he's tolerated by Baron Halley because he's very efficient at getting money out of people and also information about various members of the Baron's household. Um, some say that he may have information on Baron Halley himself that he could use a Dengst Halley. Um, now, a Grocky routinely tours areas um, of his of, that are under his responsibility for taxation, um, you know, to assess the um, tax liability of local businesses and properties and farms. Um, and he he publicly posts his his itinerary of and his route. But she tells you it is well known that he will frequently uh, and numerously deviate from the publicly posted route. And, uh, and it is uh, my assessment that he does this to throw off any, you know, uh, people that may wish him ill will. And it also puts his, the farmers and the businesses on edge because they never know what door he's going to knock on. Um, so this guy is not well liked. Nobody is going to cry, you know, over spilt brain pan. And um, probably not even the Baron. But um, there will be <clears throat> some kind of response. <clears throat> and the hope is that Halley will think that Pharaoh did it, and meanwhile you guys will go <laughs> and sneak off into the night and uh, and you know let the chaos ensue. Is the plan? So I guess you guys need to think of how you. What is your guys' plan? What do you what what do you want? How do you want to deal with this? I suppose I could bring up a map of the town. Uh, is there any other uh, known agents of the other Baron? And, like, uh, anybody that favors a certain type of weapon? Like, some guy always carries his old Colt forty five or some such like that? Or uh, laser pistol? Well, let's see here. Just something if, you know, one of the other guy's officers is known for using a laser pistol and the guy gets offed by a laser pistol. So, he does... so. He doesn't. There aren't. Real, there isn't really another, um, you know, well-known uh, Jagoff like Agraki. But um, she does tell you that Baron Pharaoh. Uh, so <clears throat> Baron Halley, in addition to having Agraki on his payroll, and I can show you what this guy looks like. Let's is Josephus. And you know he's an asshole. His name is Josephus. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if we get a hold of uh, one of the uniforms of the other guy's troops and leave like a little bit stuck on a branch. Like maybe the assassin ran away and, oh look, there's a bit of clothing. So this is uh, Joseph Agra or Josephus Agraki. Um, she tells you that Baron Halley has spent um, a chunk of money um, fielding um, special troops. And so, <clears throat> and when I say special troops, they are considered uh, paramilitary. They have trained with... Um, they've trained with... Aslani Hati and mercenaries, and so these guys are better trained than a lot of um, and a lot of the other forces between her own and um, Pharaoh's group. Now, having said that, it should be remembered that um, the average tech level uh, for the barons on cordon is only tech level nine and the the most of the surrounding towns outside of the baronial castles like for instance this is a, a baronial this is uh actually um lux's fortress 
Um, outside is like TL5. And one of the reasons why Lux, or why Baroness Lux is so popular is that she has kind of given back to the people. Um, she kind of had a financial windfall. She donated a Tech Level 9 hospital to those people, you know, with the children's ward and all of that jazz. And so the people think Baroness Lux is wonderful. But that money is only going to go so far. And so she's, you know, kind of wanting to solidify her position and uh, hopefully um, she says she wants to bring it to everybody um, so so Howley has these paramilitary guards they are armed uh, with laser carbines uh, ram grenade launchers um, things like that Pharaoh on the other hand uh, he just has you know militia as she does um, that are taken from townsfolk, they're conscripted, um, and they're just armed with rifles. Well, Ching Shi has a really good sniper rifle, so I think that that's the way to go, is figure out a route and a place to stick her where she can just blast him and then um, move. I will show you a map of the town. I like hiding and shooting things from far away. It's very efficient. So this is <clears throat> the town. Um, the current route uh, that you know of is that um, Josephus will be coming in from the north. And <clears throat> they know that he will be coming in in two ground cars. <coughs> He will, of course, have. Um, he will, of course, have bodyguards with him. How big is this place? So I suppose I should. I thought I, yeah, I did not. Okay. I should put you guys on the map, and you can figure out where you want to be. Is there any way we could fake uniforms for the other Baron's troops? <clears throat> Maybe hit them with ram grenades like they're reputed to use. And then if the populace sees you know, those guys. Yeah. I mean, you could do that. <clears throat> Just saying, if, you know, if, if the people say, yeah, it looked like those guys did it, the other Baron's troops. I wonder how speedy of an escape we could make, though. I like the idea of Ching Shi sniping and then us being plain clothes like nearby and being like, oh my god, someone ran that way or whatever. Right. And then <clears throat> we don't have to fight anybody. So where are we? Okay. Going? So intelligence remember. intelligence says he's entering from the top and then what building is he heading to it says that his the first building that he is planning to stop at is this large structure here okay which is um it's it's like a small general store uh well not general store it's it's like a um it would be like a department store Sure. Like you would see from like the 1950s. <laughs> Keep in mind, it, everything here is tech level five. So, it, you know. <clears throat> so, uh, and then my next question is the buildings in between, how tall are they? Because I'm like, if I set up here, mm -hmm. are with the buildings between me and the target be high enough that they'd get in the way or because they're smaller buildings are they also lower they are also they, these single square buildings are lower 
Um, okay. These are actually two-story building. This, these okay. L shapes are two-story buildings. Um, this department store is a two-story building. This is a small uh, hotel that is a two-story building. Two-story. Okay. Everything so, else is one. So the the two stories are the tallest buildings in the area. Correct. Okay. And I'm going to set up right here. Okay. Up on the roof. Because then I sort of have, I think, feel like that's the widest range of motion and options. And I'm going to hang out where I'm out of um, the side of, you know, can't get shot on accident, really. But also, <laughs> yeah. That's you know, a good idea. Claim to see where somebody went. And so. Ox, you wanted uh, a ram grenade launcher? No, if they're, we're going to snipe them, that's good. Okay. All right. So this building's the hotel? It is. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. And so, Ox, you're going to stay on street level? <clears throat> Well, we're, we should only need one sniper bullet, right? And I can't shoot for shit. That, yeah, that's, that's true. I'm, I'm just a plain old civilian wandering around. Okay. Okay. Well. So do... Just to clarify, do we have a diversion to attract bodyguards? Um, just claiming to have seen, like, where the carnage came from. Like, they went that way. Okay. That's not <laughs> I, I'm sure Beth, that's why Beth's over there. She's going to show some leg, get their attention, you know. I think I'm going to tell them I saw a glint of something off of one of the windows at the hotel. Then they'll have to go in and look through the rooms and shit. That's going to take up so much time. So, yeah. I, I'm, yeah, I think that should work. So, <clears throat> Ox and Beth, how are you, how are you dressed? I mean, are, are you Norm. trying to blend in with the, with the, the locals? Yes, blended. Uh, what did they wear? What's fashionable? Um, well, I was, <laughs> was going to say, you know, burlap sacks with holes in them, but no, it's not quite that bad. But, uh, uh, yeah, you know, jeans and, and T-shirts and flannels, and it's mostly a farming community, so not a whole lot of uh, industry going on on Corden. So, so yeah, um, can you hide a, a flag jacket or anything like that, or is it obvious? Flag jacket would be obvious, but I mean, if you've got cloth armor, you could throw that on. Okay, yeah, I'll wear some cloth armor just in case. Okay. Yeah, I do have cloth. I can use. Okay. Yeah, you can you can throw on cloth, and uh, I mean, ox being a varger, um, it would not be unexpected for ox to be wearing standard um you know varger fair uh most of the people on cordon have probably seen a varger at least once so they they know that varger like to wear outrageously gaudy outfits um can, clashing colors things of that nature looks like he just came out of a clown car kind of thing And so you see these two, um, these two ground cars coming from the north. Beth and I, <clears throat> I am going to assume that that all of you have com dots and are, uh, you know, staying in contact. Yes. Um, Beth, 
Oh, here's one thing I might bring up for you guys to spend some money on in the future. So you guys have just been using mobile comms, and the thing with mobile comms is that mobile comms connect to whatever uh, network is planet wide at the time, and that can be good or bad. Um, I mean, obviously it's good because you you get you know local news and and all and internet access and all of that when you're on the planet. What you might consider doing, though, <clears throat> is maybe investing in transceivers um, because transceivers can encrypt and, I mean, more than encrypt, but they, they can give you a little bit more of a secure signal and things like that. They would also work with ComDots as well. And they also have like a five kilometer range. So, um, and those would actually bounce, I mean, you could pretty much increase that five kilometer range by, you know, putting your ship in between you and whatever you're calling so you know as a relay so um that might be something to think about in the future um and if you get them at a high enough tech level they can work as a as a pocket computer just like a mobile com can as well so but beth um the reason why i bring up that you're wearing com dots beth make a recon plus intellect check Got a twelve. Okay. So Beth, you notice <clears throat> you notice that uh, these cars seem to be sitting a little bit heavy. Like the they look like normal ground cars, but they seem to be sitting a little lower on the suspension. Like there's some weight to them. Okay, um, I'll say over the com dots, whatever whatever code we have for the cars, I'll say it looks heavy or something, you know, let them know. They're riding dirty. <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, and if they don't give a shit about the people in the town, they might just start unloading in the direction of the shot. Right. So... If anybody wants to abort the plane at any point, it's fine. We'll just so say with, so. With your um, with your twelve on that. Wait a minute. Find it. Oh, I know why. I know why. Oh my god! I can't spell tonight. So this is what you're seeing. What you're seeing is that these cars, um, in addition to the people inside of them, you're seeing that these cars are likely armored. <clears throat> and ugly, I might add. This is an ugly car. So they are, they've got some protection and a small arms fire. Um, I doubt that they're going to stand up to a grenade or something like that. I mean. It's an armored Prius. So you see these ground cars come in, <clears throat> sitting low, and, uh, this car comes over and pulls over and parks here. And this car parks right here. And is one riding lower than the other? No. No. Okay. Okay. Out of this car... Two bodyguards show up. Out of this car. Two bodyguards show up. And your target shows up. But he doesn't go to the building that 
of course, that he said, you know, on his itinerary, he was supposed to go here. Instead, he comes over and he knocks on this house door here. So my thought is I want them, to, like, I don't want to immediately start firing because if he, if we take aim, if I fire, as soon as he climbs out of the car, they're just going to put him back in the car and drive off, right? So I'd like for them, I'd like to wait with your permission, Captain, uh, until they are farther away from their vehicles so that if they all head running towards their cars again, I got a sh another shot at them instead of immediately circle him up and put him in a vehicle and drive away. We got all day. Okay. Okay. So he uh, he talks to somebody on uh, at the door, and uh, Beth, you are. You're far. You're close enough that you can kind of hear um, a little bit that um, he's basically shaking down this house owner, and uh, <clears throat> basically telling. Essentially, what it comes down to is he's telling the guy that he didn't pay enough taxes, and the guy is complaining that he doesn't owe um, Baron Halley taxes because he already paid his taxes to Baron Pharaoh. And Agraki is um, kind of being belligerent about it, and his two two of his bodyguards make their way over. And this bodyguard kind of comes over and stands in the street, and this bodyguard comes over and stands in the street. And Agraki at this point has this how this homeowner. He's got him by the shirt. And he's telling him, you know, you better pay up. And uh, he's he's getting really belligerent with him, kind of hands on. Jeez, what a psycho! Uh, I'm gonna go here in case it gets real ugly, like bullet ugly. <laughs> okay. So he he uh, continues, and yeah. and and of course, uh, Ching Shi through your scope, you can see that he um, he pushes the guy back and lets go of his shirt and kind of smooths the guy's shirt out and he uh, and says something to the guy um, about, you know, uh, well, if, if you uh, make sure that you pay us uh, the extra tax that you owe us, then, uh, you know, I can I can promise that nothing bad will happen to your kids. Um, this bodyguard moves over here. This bodyguard gets back in the car. Oops. I should have done that first. And this bodyguard... Oops. This bodyguard gets in the car. this guy he kind of moves over here and a uh, the homeowner obviously is going to shut his door he moves up towards this direction what do you guys want to do move over there <laughs> You're not gonna. You're not gonna tell him that there was something suspicious. Tell one of the bodyguards there was something suspicious at the hotel. I was gonna. I mean, once once I shot, it's fired. I'm gonna say there was. Something oh, okay. That yeah. it was coming from the hotel. Got it. Still waiting to take your shot. Uh. Well, what do you think, Captain? I mean, it's up to you. Uh, are you you you're aiming with each of these, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. No. Um, yeah, she's. I would assume she's spending a minor action to aim. She's got him yeah, in her scope, we, so that's a plus one to her hit or to her attack. Right. It's okay. it's really up to you when you shoot. I don't. I can't. Yeah, it's that's up to you completely. Okay. 
So the question is, are they far enough away from the cars that I would get two shots in? And I don't think that's the case. Hold on. <laughs> you know, an alternate thing we could do is I could rush up and be like, I'm a doctor, and then do, like, all the wrong things. So the bodyguards are uh, are armed with... Um, <clears throat> With submachine guns, and you can tell that there's a little bit of bulk under their jacket. They probably have an auto pistol and a shoulder holster. Um, sure. And you can tell that a Grocky himself has a bulk in his jacket, uh, probably has an auto pistol. But you don't see that any of them are wearing any kind of body armor at all. Okay. Well, they're going to be able to run right to their vehicles, which is not what I want. But hey. I also don't want it to go on forever, so maybe I should just do it. I have a, I have another, um, I have another idea. Maybe. Okay. Maybe we could ask homeowner here when they're shaking them down next. We could, we could put on our fucking battle dress in there and answer the door and just like murder the shit out of the guy. And they could be way the fuck away and have, like, an alibi. Oh. I don't know. It's an idea. If you kill a wearing battle dress, will that implicate the other Baron? Um, I don't know. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know that it would implicate the other Baron, but, I mean, if you're walking around in battle dress, you're going to be... You're going to stick out like a sore thumb. <clears throat> Ching Shi, not so much, because she's already stealthed her way up on top of the roof. Uh, but I, I would think that Beth this is like and Ox later. would, yeah, I think Beth and Ox would, you know, glumping around uh, in a uh, in battle dress would be hard to to uh, stay out of sight. Well, right. but I mean, the goal of this isn't just to kill the guy; it's to make it to get the two barons fighting. So we want to make the one baron think his tax collector was killed by the other guy, not a bunch of murder hobos from space. That's true. That is true. Okay. Well, never mind. It was just an idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just don't. I think I'm gonna go one. I'm gonna go one more round. I'm gonna hold off one more round. Okay. Why not lull them into a false sense of security? Okay. So he goes inside the department store. The bodyguard follows him into the department store. So they are effectively out of sight. Okay, um, just the one bodyguard? Yes. This Maybe bodyguard... Can... Um, Beth, can you... Oh, go ahead. He he comes over and he kind of is milling around in the middle of this uh, street. And you see that this ground car, uh, it rolls down and kind of pulls in and parks here. Okay. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Plus, uh, Ox, you said you've got grenades? Mm, yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm just liking where that's going. All right. Now, I will say um, that, um, let's see, from your position... It's only 12 meters. Um, well, that's... Yeah. The, this map is probably not uh, very to scale. So I would okay. say, though, that uh, it's going to be less than 100 meters and you have a scope um, that Ching Shi, if you wanted to try to make a cold shot, it would be a minus two to your roll. What is... I don't, what, I'm not familiar with that term. For a hit location. You say oh, you like want to shoot him in the head. head. Yeah, head, head or, or definitely go for center mass or, you know. Okay. Okay. Well, my plan will be to aim for his head when he steps back out the building. Okay. So he's in this building for probably Which about, I've told my team. He's probably in That's for okay. about 15 minutes. Uh, Beth, what are you doing? Um... 
If it didn't take so long to kill people, I'd say it'd be a great time to kill that bodyguard. But shit, I, it, I, I've it, always felt you're that not going to be able to do it in one round. I've always felt that it, it people die pretty quick in this game. I mean, the only game I've ever played that people died faster was Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> right. I just mean, I mean, like she can't sneak up behind him and slit his throat necessarily, and actually get it. It'll be like you you take your blade and slide, slit his throat. And he's got minus one to his endurance. Like, but like what some I, of those things are pretty instantaneous in real life, but can take more than one go to take someone down. In what game. I can do is distract him so when the shot goes off, he doesn't know which way it was thrown. Fox, what are you doing? <clears throat> Uh, milling around. Is there a local to chat with or something? Or, oh uh, yeah, you see some some uh, farmers and whatnot coming out. This this building here <clears throat> is uh, a local tavern. Oh, okay. Um, well, I'll head over to the Hennigans. I'll, I'll loiter around the front of the tavern. Okay. All right. Try and uh, talk to a farmer about how the weather's been, crop futures and stuff. Okay. Not that I really care. Yeah, he he is going on about, you know, banal crap that you don't care about. <laughs> banal That's crap that you don't care about. interesting stuff I've ever heard as yes. long as it keeps me out here chatting. Yes, about grain yields. And uh, uh, he does tell you a couple of interesting pieces of information, though, um, that he tells you. Where is it? He tells you that uh, <clears throat> he's been selling, his, or <laughs> he's been selling his crop yields to Baron Halley, and of course, uh, a good portion of his crop yields goes in a form of taxes that Halley just takes, but. He does tell you that he's not receiving as much money as he used to. And that uh, he thinks that Halley has uh, been hit with some kind of tariff. And that there's a rumor that Baron Halley, you know, did something to um, kind of piss off the Imperial authorities. It seems like, it seems like there's some kind of trade tariff Next Halley, and so nobody that is that is a part of his uh, barony is making as much money. So this guy living in a disputed territory tells you he's thinking about instead uh, throwing in with Pharaoh. We heard something about that at the party, I believe. Yeah, uh, you heard that. Uh... <laughs> So you know that Halley has more access to TL9 manufacturing equipment, um, and, but it seems that he's recently set, uh, he's recently suffered a setback, and it's possible that he offended the Imperials. Um, that and it, it seems that his trade income has come down, although the exports that are coming out of his barony are the same. So that suggests that there's some kind of trade tariff. Uh, that the Imperium has placed at Dank's Tim. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the ships uh, that his bulk grain and foodstuffs are sold to are Imperial, so that kind of fits the idea that there's a tariff going on. Okay. Interesting. So after about 15 yeah. to 20 minutes, this bodyguard steps out and outsteps Josephus. All right, I'm ready. I'm going to aim for the head. You should have gone for the head. Okay, so that is a... So, plus right. one, so that is a minus one net. Uh, okay. So, gun combat plus your dex. Okay. Ooh, ooh! <laughs> uh, let's see. 10, 11... Uh, 12, so 11. Okay. 
That is a plus three to damage, and we're gonna see. And I have, and it's um, AP six. Although I don't think he's wearing. We haven't established if he's got anything else on. Under his. Yeah, body. he he's not wearing any armor, so. His head's not armored. That's, That's true. His head is not armored. Unless he wears a helmet while he shakes people down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's 5D on an unhelmed head. This is going to be fun. Okay. Well, I got highs and lows. Uh, 12, 15, plus 3, 18. Oof. And roll a d6 minus 3. Okay. And the armor that is his skull has taken an additional... <laughs> <laughs> All right. A d6 That's minus 3. three. So I rolled a 5. So d6 minus 3, 2. Okay. You actually missed his head and you hit one of his arms. But... What was the total damage? Uh, let's see. 18? 18, yeah. I'm not sure that it's going to matter. <laughs> it's not going to matter. <laughs> <laughs> So, there's this thing called severe wound. <laughs> a severe wound is inflicted if the traveler receives more damage than his endurance score. Severe wound will cause the traveler to lose consciousness and will have serious consequences even after he recovers. All right. Yeah. Okay. Keith's, Keith's aware. You guys know what happens with severe wounds. A crippling wound results from taking at least twice the traveler's endurance score in one attack. If the wound to survive the location hit is completely out of action and suffers permanent damage, um, strength, endurance, or dex selected at random is reduced by D3. So, Ching Shi mm -hmm. hits him in, you know, his left arm. And his left arm is shattered and blown completely off. He, he like the shoulder. He's got no arm. So then Captain's going to run up and be like, hey, I'm a doctor. Do you need a hand? And he immediately turns white and falls and passes out. He hits the ground. The bodyguards immediately pull up their submachine guns. Yep. And now things have to get interesting. Now I have to pull up my hands. Right. And you can say you're a doctor. You can help. Yeah, maybe. And then just open it up. A, well, because then they won't shoot you. You'll at least have, be able to stand there and not get shot for a little while. And then you can tell them that you saw somebody running off into the distance. Yeah, true. Make sure that you and Ox point in the same direction when you say the shooter went that way. I thought Ox was going to blow up the car. I don't know. Oh, is Ox going to blow up the car? That'd be good. If I get the guys over by the body, he could blow up the car. And then... Yeah. I don't know. That might draw them back over. You guys might just want to creep out of the way. While I lament that I couldn't save his life as his blood... You should, you should shout out, like, directions. Like, you... Find me a blah blah blah, and you go get us such and such, and you, and then they won't be shooting us, and we can blow up their vehicles. They can keep their vehicles. I doubt they give a shit about this guy at all. I think they're like, oh fuck, I gotta go apply for jobs now in this <laughs> market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so everybody can roll initiative. Bodyguards got zero. <clears throat> I 
also got zero. Uh, Beth, what is your dex? My dex is eight. <laughs> okay. I am going to let you go first. And Ox, what'd you get? You got zero. I as rolled well. an eight, so that's a zero, I believe. And what is Ox's dex? Uh, nine. Ooh. It was ten till some nanites chewed on me. Yeah. Wait. No. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm actually. I'm at plus two. I don't know why. I got twelve, and for, for oh. some reason, my brain. I said, "Oh, that's a zero, but it's not." Yeah. No. You're. You're at. Whatever. You're actually at four. If you rolled a twelve. You're at four. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I, I have uh, I have days where I'm, like, unable to um, math. So don't feel bad. Uh, hold on here. That's better. Okay. So, uh, Ching Shi, it is your turn. You see the bodyguards have armed themselves. Um, Wait, it's not Beth's turn if she's got four? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I, uh, see, I did it too. I forgot Beth rolled better than she did. So, Beth, uh, you see this bodyguard uh, <clears throat> very close range. <clears throat> Um, pulling out his submachine gun and kind of scanning the area from where the shot rang out. <coughs> so I put up, I put up hands and say, "I'm a doctor. Has, has someone been shot? Do they need help?" Mm hmm. Make a uh, persuasion plus charm check. Got an eight. Okay, so <clears throat> um, he tells you, uh, so he says, um, um, we're under attack, you're going to want to take cover. And you hear him, he, when he says that, he acts like you interrupted him, and he's uh -huh. talking to somebody else on his comm dot. Oh my god, what a dumbass. Okay. He's a mansplainer. Splainer. Just shoot him in the head. Just kick him in the this, balls and pray. This is what the bodyguards look like. I mean... <laughs> yeah, he just like didn't have, listen to anything you said and told you what you should do. So I think <laughs> that you need to shoot well, and or kick him. Do we need another shot into the tax collector or... Hey, I'm going to point at the hotel then if he's not going to listen to me. So Ching Shi saw him go down. And basically his left arm has been turned into lingering red mist. Right. I don't know if we need another shot. But I mean all we need to do is kill him and then we can get out of here. We don't need to dick with the bodyguards or the cars. As long as they don't kill us. Well that's what I said. If Right now they don't know who or what. Captain Beth is obviously not the shooter. The yeah, bar, I'm gonna, bar I'm gonna, talking to the farmer isn't. I'm going to point towards the hotel since he's not a listener. Maybe he's a visual person. <laughs> draw, draw him a map with crayon. <laughs> yeah, fucking A. <clears throat> I mean, I'll take cover too, but just I'll just be pointing. Okay. Um, okay. Ching Shi, what would you like to do? <coughs> I would like to. Oh, this is gonna hurt so bad. I guess. Now, is Ching Shi? <clears throat> are you in your battle dress? <coughs> well, that's what I was wondering. It's like since my whole thing <clears throat> was to hide, there'd be no reason for me to not be in my battle dress right, in my I, mind. Yeah, and I mean, you have the recon battle dress. That's kind of 
you know, that would give you yeah. your grav belt and or your yeah. grav and assist. Well, and... I mean, what I'd like to do is put my gun in my uh, gun rack on my battle dress and fly away. But that sort of leaves these guys hanging, although they didn't shoot. So maybe that's OK. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to stow my gun in my battle dress because I added the multi-weapon rack or whatever it's called. And I'm going to grab, fly my ass out of there, like Boba Fett style. Okay, so you're, you're, are you, nah, here's a good question. <clears throat> are you heading back to Baroness Lux's fortress, or are you go, going someplace? Head towards the other Baron's fortress. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. And make a dog leg. Yeah, I'm going to head in the direction of the opponent Baron. Okay. So, Ching Shi nopes out. And you see these two guards. As soon as she takes off, these two guards um, bring their guns up towards the sky as she's taking off. Um, Ox, what would you like to do? I'm doing the same thing the farmers around me are doing. Okay, so they are all kind of ducking and, you know, hiding behind barrels and troughs and whatnot. Um, this this tavern and the this is like a little market area here. Um, they're all kind of um, ducking behind stalls and things like that. Um, make a recon plus intellect check. Okay. Skills. Recon. I wish that input value marker would come to the top automatically. Yeah. Okay. Whatever that says. Okay. So, nine. a nine. Um, you hear, <clears throat> coming from this direction, you hear the sound of something big and heavy of a vehicle. Um Sounds like it's it's uh, in a hurry, coming this way. I will report that to my fellow conspirators. Okay. And now might be a good time to get that grenade ready. Okay. Oh, this could... Just like, <laughs> don't pull the pin yet, but there I'm might be a large sure anti-aircraft uh, something coming up that needs to get exploded. Uh, okay. A grenade's going to take something like that out. So, Ox is, is uh, doing what the locals do. Um, make a... Hmm. Make a... Make a... Make a stealth... Plus, uh, make a stealth check, a uh, stealth plus uh, intellect check, and you can make that with a boon. Okay. <clears throat> so boon is you roll twice? So boon is you roll 3d6 and you take the two highest. Is there an easy way to change that? I'll just roll this and add a 3d. I, I, th roll a I think that on the there is a way to roll boon on the character sheet. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure how to do it. I'm not um, uh, a huge yeah. fan of that particular character sheet. It's lacking in a lot of ways. But I got a five two two, so seven plus three ten. Okay, so you are <clears throat> you are effectively blending in um, <laughs> as you're wearing pastel rainbow clothing and and whatnot. But you are effectively blending in the bodyguards the bodyguards well the first thing that's going to happen is this guy is going to step out of his car and this guy is going to step out of his car they are both armed with shotguns. And they are 
these two are basically taking aim down the street, um, trying to provide some form of cover. This bodyguard is going to attempt... Man, he is dumb. He is going to attempt first aid. Just like shoot up into the air like in Point Break. Ah! Yeah, one of, one of them's going to do that too, but minus three. Well, he attempts to do first aid and uh, fails with a seven. So Josephus is still in the process of bleeding out. This guy is going to attempt to shoot at Ching Shi as she's flying away, but um, I'm going to say he's at a minus three to hit you simply because you're moving so fast um, and you are not a big target. Which makes that... Thanks, I work out. <laughs> a net minus one. Yeah. Oh, look at the big balls on this guy. Okay, so... <clears throat> he is going to roll 3D plus 3... Oh, wait, wait, wait. 11... Three D plus six. Oh, sorry. I was like, wait, what? That's better. I so what is your what is the armor on your Battle Rush. 23. Oh, well, yeah, so bullets ricochet off of your armor. He definitely hits you, but uh, obviously nothing gets through um, your battle dress. And that is when you see this. Where is he? This guy shows up. Looks like he needs a grenade. And he... If I can get my screen to work. Also goes at zero. So Beth, what would you like to do? Holy shit! Um, <laughs> let's see. Is the place I'm next to a residence? It is. Okay. Uh, actually, well, I can't approach the department store. I'm going to bang on the door and try and get in the residence to get out of sight of this giant thing. Hope they let me in. So you're going to, you want to go into the residence? Yeah, I don't want to um, agitate any of the bodyguards into shooting me, and I also don't want to be in a building that might get 
targeted by the tank. So that's the best thing I could come up with. If they say no, I'm just going to hide on the other side. Okay. So um, th there's no answer, uh, but the door is unlocked. Okay. I'm going to go in and peek out the window and see what I can see. But geez. Okay. So you get in here. And you, uh, you can see, so this side is actually the window. This is the, the door. Um, you can see out the window, you can see that this is a Partheon Wheeled Scout. And I'm usually pretty good about this. There we go. This is a Partheon Wheeled Scout. So it does have a medium auto cannon and a machine gun on it. Um, but, I mean, you know. It, it's more than deadly enough, you know, even though it's tech level 7. Well, yeah, and that armor's going to stop a grenade from doing shit to it. Yeah. I would have to roll quite well. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the front of it, I don't know, you might have a chance with the rear. Yeah, and get six points through. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah, out well, of... It's 24 hull. Hey, so. everybody saw the assassin leave. I'm just a farmer. I'm looking to buy a farm in this area. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so... Assassin went that way. So, Beth, you come into this this house, and, I mean, these, these, these little farmhouses, um, it's like a... It, it's a hovel, man. I mean... They don't have even, like, it's a one bed, it's a one room. It's like a studio. And there's a bed in the corner, a little pot stove, and, you know, you see that there's a number of people, uh, a small family, uh, a wife and a husband, and two young kids. They've tipped over the dining room table and are hiding behind the dining room table. And they're, they're looking at you in complete terror. They don't know what's going on. I could be like, can I hide with you guys? Right? That should put them at ease. Um, yeah, the husband, the husband holds up a finger like, you know, be quiet, and tells you to get down. All right, I'll do that. Okay. ching Shi, I... you are flying away. And uh, you're heading over into Baron Pharaoh uh territory um are you gonna set down or what's your plan here nape of earth is a good term you're muted what's a good term nape of earth fly as close to the ground as you can use every bit of terrain to block your line of sight and keep them from shooting at you oh, okay i want i guess i want to do that that sounds pretty smart Okay. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily want to. Like, I want to avoid interacting with people in that territory. Like, I I do want to be as unseen by them as well. Okay. Um, so you there, know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> because I feel like the more everyone on their side protests that they didn't see anything, the more likely the other side's gonna believe it was them. So there are a number as you as you head out of town towards Pharaoh's uh, territory. You there are a number of small small cops of trees and uh, a small forest line you could duck into um, to try to hide. Um, make a recon plus intellect check. Eleven. So you see, as you're flying, <clears throat> you spot that there are um, a number mm -hmm. of um, you see a number of guys wearing um, like 
basically black ski masks and goggles for for less of a for for a uh, lack of a better term um and they're just carrying rifles and on their arm they have a um they have an armband on their upper arm that has the insignia of house pharaoh and they're they're right. running towards the town yeah i'm going to i'm going to i changed my mind i'm going to stop long enough to just let them know that a wheeled scout is heading this way so you're you're gonna I'm tell gonna you're gonna tell the 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 guys in the in the uh, ski masks that yeah just like I I just saw a wheel scout. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Okay, uh, make <laughs> make a uh, persuasion plus uh, charm check. Okay, uh, six. And you said charm? Yes. Ugh, seven. I'm not very charming. I'm so scared. <laughs> so these guys, um, they, they're they training their guns on you. Fair. Fair enough. I don't recommend it, though, because if they're wearing turtleneck sweaters... The, essentially, yeah, they're wearing tactile necks. They're not <laughs> going to do well. Although I can't shoot them. Because if there's a squad of the opposing Baron's goons dead, then it obviously wasn't his side. That's a good point. All right. Um, so they're all aiming at me. I'm going to say, I'm going to ask them if they know what I'm wearing. It's not Oscar de la Renta. <laughs> you, you don't see Ralph Lauren anywhere on this, do you? Um so they uh it it dawns on them you know that that uh perhaps this isn't the wisest course of action when you ask them that and some a, a um, squad leader comes out steps up front and uh and wants to know uh wants to know who you are and what you're doing in Baron Pharaoh's territory. That's between me and Pharaoh. He says, uh, he says you're implying that you have some kind of uh, authorization to be here. Do you have a confirmation code? Uh, you are inferring that I have that as opposed to my implying it. And I will give any necessary information to the Baron himself. If you can make me go. Mm. But I, I will like... head straight there. You can watch me fly towards his compound. I like that. Make his troops think you're working for him, too. Yeah. Not just a hat rack. Look, how would I have gotten all of this onto the planet? How would I be coming this way? Why would I fly directly into this land after conflict? Make a, and why would I warn you? Why would I warn you that they're coming if I wasn't friendly? Make a deception plus intellect check. Which I have a feeling you're probably going to blow these guys away because they are not, you know... They're, they're... Well, I mean, they're not going to Mensa meetings, but... Uh, let's see. So that's seven, eight, and it was plus intellect. Yes. Ten. Okay. So he uh, he orders his men to lower their weapons and says, uh, uh, and he he kind of half-assed sal either salutes you or says, you know, like hi. I mean, these guys are. Um, these are not the the best troops you've ever seen. Um, totally. you, get, so what, you get the impression that they leave no meal left behind. Yes. What I'm going to do is a slightly more formal version of whatever he was trying to do. Okay. Like I know. So he saluted me. I'm going to a slightly more formally salute him back. And I'm going to say, if I was working for the Baron, 
um, I would definitely tell him that you guys are are ace. He says, well, I, I appreciate that, uh, especially coming from an agent of the Baron. Um, he says, we need to get to the town. Yes, absolutely. I have to I have to make my report. Okay, and they turn around and they they head back towards the town. Okay. And it's, I mean, they are on foot. It's going to take them a while to get there. Sure. Ox, what are you doing? Are you just continuing to hide? Uh um, I would like to get out. Are any of these guys hiding in the tavern? Several people are trying to hide in the tavern, actually. Yeah, okay, I'll go in the tavern, too. Okay, so you... I, I'm thinking trying to leave town might, right now might look suspicious. Yes. So you go... I'll, I'll wait till the other uh, side's troops get here. So you get into the tavern, and just like in, in Beth's hovel, uh, they've turned over a lot of the tables, or ducking down behind the bar, um... You know, try the bartender. On the other hand, continues to he he basically yells out, "Is like as long as there's a siege going on, drinks are on the house," and he's pouring beers and handing them out. So I, I'm gonna. Does this happen often? I was gonna buy a farm here. And if somebody replies back, "Well, this is contested territory. You never know what's gonna happen." But I heard that that asshole Josephus Agraki got shot. I'm not gonna be sorry to see him gone. Like I said, I, I'm leading into, you know, I'm playing into, I'm a, looking to buy a farm. I'm a local, yokel, don't know what's going on. And reconsidering living in this town now. <laughs> the, the lead content is a little bit too high in the air. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you're ducking down, you got a free beer. Um, it looks like one of the tables that had been tipped over, there was a minor card game going on. So you're, you're. Kind Ooh, of breaking gosh. out in a cold sweat. Hey, any, anybody want to play cards while we're uh, waiting? <laughs> they all look at you like you've lost your mind. Well, I have, but, you know. I imagine Ox is probably looking around going, is, is this your guys' first time? <laughs> you know, like... Bodyguards. Well, this guy already failed it. Um... I mean, he failed at first aid, so he can't apply it again. <clears throat> Which means poor Josephus needs to make an endurance check. At minus three. No, he fails and loses another dex point due to blood loss. He is slowly but steadily bleeding out. Um, the bodyguard here is going to grab him and drag him, start dragging him towards the car. Um, this bodyguard moves up this way this bodyguard this bodyguard moves over to this house or to this uh, two-story building that um, Ching Shi was on top of and kicks open the door and you you guys can hear uh, auto fire coming from inside the house The Parthian Wield Scout moves to here and the <clears throat> the auto cannon starts to turn and on the turret and is aiming in this direction. 
and out of it, out of the Parthian, uh, sorry, I had a brain fart there for a second. Comes, steps out a paramilitary guard. And he is armed with a laser carbine. And he has a flak jacket on. These, these guys aren't, uh, aren't quite so um, weakly armed. But he's, he just takes up a position and is looking for a target. Beth, what would you like to do? There's Devin. Keep on cowering, I guess. Hello, Devin. <laughs> I caught him up to speed, although there's not much his character can do. Right? We're just, like, blending in I... as street support when the snipers hit. Do you want to cower with me in this building? With the sure, I'll, I'll, I'll cower. Okay. <laughs> I love cowering. The family that cowers together. <laughs> uh, yeah. Keith, go ahead and roll initiative so we can find out where you are in the stack. Jeez. Ooh. Yep, we're both cowering away. <laughs> okay. So... You, so, are you both going to continue your cowering? And, uh, I mean, are you trying to reassure this family that <laughs> you just kicked open their door? Hey, we're hiding with you. Um, are you going to assure them that, you know, you're not here? Uh, here's another question. Are you, I mean, I know that you guys that were on the street, you're, you're, you three, Ox, Beth, and Keith, are not, um, wearing armor beyond cloth. Um, are you armed? Yeah, I think, like, whatever is normal. People probably have, like, revolvers or something in case of, like, wildlife encounters if they're, like, farming in a rural area. Yeah, I would think... I would think... Um... I think I'll tell the family that the guy got shot. That's all, I mean, so that they know what the, all the hubbub's about. Right. Uh, now I'm curious. Uh, I guess I should have known this beforehand, but I'm curious as to what the law level is here. Let's see here. It says that the law level, eesh. Law level 7, which means, what does that mean? Here we go, law level, law level 7. Basically, everything below shotguns is banned. And anything below mesh armor is banned. So even your cloth armor is technically illegal. But you guys are probably wearing cloth under what your, you know, your yeah. regular clothing. Um, so. I guess no gun, but I could probably hide a monkey blade what? or something. Well, like I mean, let's see. So it says shotguns, all firearms except shotguns and, uh, well, no, shotguns. The only weapon that you're technically allowed to carry would be stunners. Um, and it even says then carrying weapons is discouraged. Okay, well, monkey blades small. That's true. Monkey blades are small. So I will have that at least. I don't know. Would I, I wouldn't have come for... I thought we were here for possible ground support or... I don't well, know. Well, I mean, I don't... I, you could theoretically be packing something. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying 
Um, but if we're trying to get blended in and that's the law level and we're searched. Right, you so don't want to be searched. Yeah. So, I guess, I guess not. Yeah. I guess I could, I will carry a knife that could conceivably be um, seen as a utility or other practical knife. Okay. And Monkey Blade will do that. Um, so, yeah. Keith, are are you continuing to hide? What are what are you carrying? Um, so I I feel like I'm not quite caught up, but I I think that uh, based on what I know, I would probably be in the same situation as the captain because I do own a monkey blade. Okay. Uh, yeah, probably not. Probably not carrying my sword. <laughs> um, I so mean, yeah, that's a, a laser pistol would be hard to conceal simply because it, if it was just the gun, it would be easy to conceal, but it's not because laser weapons have the, the retractable cord that comes off of them that goes to a belt or a wrist pack to power them. Okay. So they're, they're hard to hide. I have a woodpecker. I might be able to carry that. Oh, but... yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, woodpecker. Um... I don't, yeah, woodpecker auto pistol. You could probably hide that under a jacket. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I might have that on me just well, to, do to, you or as a concealed not? sort of weapon. Okay. Um, you do? That, that's, yeah, I don't know um, enough about why we're here. So. <laughs> So they they were they're here. Um, the Baroness they're in a contested area. The area is contested between uh, Baron Halley and Baron Pharaoh. And Baroness Lux wants you wanted you guys to come in and assassinate Josephus Agraki, who is a tax assessor, and he's a well known bastard that nobody likes. And the the idea is that if you kill him while he's in this contested territory then the two barons will be at each other's throat. One will think the other one did it. And um, Agraki works for Baron Halley, so the idea is that they he will think that Pharaoh did it. So Ching Shi oh. has a successfully shot uh, Agraki and um, basically blew his arm completely off, and he is unconscious and currently bleeding out. This guy okay. up there. Um, and... The bodyguards have called in um, paramilitary support, and they showed up with a Partheon wheeled uh, six track or eight track? Six track? What is this? Eight track. I, I have a question though. So, if guns are illegal here, but we know the fixer guy, right? Yes. So, wouldn't he be able to get us out of trouble? Oh, more than likely, yeah. Okay, then I would I would take a gun, okay. not a big one. Yeah, I mean yeah. you could conceal a pistol. I I would think. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'd carry. Would be my woodpecker then. Okay. Okay. And okay, I mean, Beth, if you wanted to bring the Sindalian officer's pistol, you you could. I yeah, that seems fun. Let's do that. Okay. So. So then, my question. So Keith, are you just are you just hunkering down? Are you guys? Are the two of you? Uh, do you have your gun in your hand? What <laughs> are you keeping them concealed for now? What are you doing? I, I'm going to keep it concealed for now. I don't. I, don't I, I feel like the situation right now is that uh, we're trying to avoid getting uh, any attention on us. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm not going to keep my gun out. Um, I'm going to keep it hidden. The assassin flew off using a grab belt and a and combat armor. Yeah, Ching, she's the only one in battle dress. Um, she's the one who made the shot. And uh, she flew off towards Baron Pharaoh's territory, th making everybody think that he assassinated this tax assessor. Or ordered it. Cool. And yeah, she, is, like she is met with some of uh, Pharaoh's militiamen. And uh, they indeed, uh, she convinced them that uh, 
they think that she is an agent of Pharaoh. And she told them, hey, there, there's a wheeled scout vehicle in the in the town. You're going to want to deal with that. So they think that she's working for Pharaoh. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Let's keep cowering. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to hide out for a little bit. So Ching Shi, uh, now you continue on your way. Are you ducking down into the woods, waiting for the heat? What are you doing? I feel like it's time for me to start my big lazy loop back to the ship. Okay. So you're heading back to port. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, you know, just as intentionally avoiding any signs of anything, even if it's long way around, working my way back to the ship. Okay. Important. All right. So you start heading back to the starport. Um, what you know? They have a Class C starport. It's not. <laughs> it's not the worst starport you've ever seen, but it's by no means what you're definitely used to. Most of the starports in uh, Trojan Reach, believe it or not. Are a lot of them are A or B. This is yeah, but we've we've had some ones that are basically like floating tin can yeah, light. Well, yeah, yeah, like so. oh hey, we we brushed off some dirt. You can land here. That's like a class E. Yeah. We'll stay out of your way as you land. Right, right. Here we'll we put a flashlight in the ground so you have a landing beacon. Um, yeah. but it's it's not quite that bad. But uh, you know, um, it'll take you a while to get back there. Um, Ox, you, uh, you Does are... the, uh, uh, tavern have a restroom? It does. Um, do they, what type of ceilings do they have? they have drop ceilings or anything like that? Uh, no, these are just, like, wood beam ceilings. It's almost like a, uh, it's, it's built almost like a Viking long haul. Is there any room on top of any of those beams? Yeah. Uh, there's now a smoke grenade and two HE grenades up there. Oh, <laughs> Oh, you're you're stashing them. Uh, I'm not thinking that's better than carrying them right now. Okay. But, yeah, you know, the grenade's not going to do squat to that wheeled vehicle. I was hoping maybe like to roll them under the ground car. You know, two of them under the car should probably disable one car. But yeah. Okay. So grenades aren't going to do much good. Go ahead. And I do have a I do have a body pistol, but I'm concealing that. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's easy to conceal. Go ahead and make a. Uh... Uh, stealth plus dex check to kind of it's going to be a it, there's going to be two things rolled into one here so the stealth plus dex check is to see if you can uh, well I no, if you're going into the bathroom nobody's going to see you um, so it's just to see how well you hide these Yeah, 12. Pretty good. Okay. Janitor better be cautious, though, if they, when they dust. Right? Yeah. <laughs> don't, uh, don't drop those. The, this bodyguard, oops, gets back into the car. Man, what am I doing? I'm just clicking all over the place here. Here we go. He's going to get back into the car. Get him out of my way. This... Um, assassins usually work alone, so you know, if they saw this, yes, and leave. Right. This guy is going to drag a Grocky into the car. And a Grocky is going to make another... Endurance check. That's not good for him. Uh, he continues to bleed out all over the place. But he we is. Feel for him. He is. <laughs> oh, Josephus, we barely knew you. 
Uh, he is in the car. Right. After we saw the compassion he showed for the citizens. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, this bodyguard... Um, this bodyguard comes over here. This paramilitary guy is, backs up a bit. And this bodyguard gets in his car. And well, that was dumb of me. Okay, so it wasn't him. One of these guys. There he is. The Parthion moves here and opens fire on this building with its auto cannon. They already killed everybody inside. Wow. He's dead now. Gotta send a message. Six plus mm. I guess it's two D six plus zero. Ooh. And so then Oof. So they open up uh, full auto with this uh, auto cannon on this building for 41 points of damage. There's not a whole lot left of this building. Um, it is cored through and through, pretty much devastated. Did it bring Josephus back to life? <laughs> <laughs> does it make you feel better? Uh, no, it does not. Um, he is still um, on death's door with one dex point left of all three of his physical stats. Uh, so, yeah, you, Beth and Keith, you guys can hear... The, well, and I mean, Beth, you were poking your head up every once in a while looking out the window. You see this, this auto cannon unleash on this building. Um, you can't see the results of what is happening to the building, but you can see the smoke and... and Whatnot from this auto cannon cutting loose. All right, they they probably feel better after that. I think they'll go soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, all everybody. Well, everybody except for Ching Shi can hear the auto cannon open up. Um, so Beth, are you keeping your head down? Yeah, I I think um, there's not much for me to do. I think they're just gonna leave. That's my guess. All right. What about Keith? Um, yeah, uh, I I guess I'll follow the captain's lead. I I, I want to get out of here, but um, I'll I'll wait. Okay. So Ching Shi. Um, you were about halfway back to the spaceport. Um, make a electronics comms plus intellect or education check. So if I have electronics computers one, then I have electronics zero, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, eight, exactly. Okay. So you uh, are, as you're flying back, 
your your comms and your battle dress are switching through the different bands. Um, you are picking up chatter. <clears throat> um, basically, different uh, local news services um, that, for for the most part, all of these news services are state run by the individual states. But you're picking up chatter from all three that are basically um, stating that there Ooh. there was some kind of attack um, in this contested town and uh, that it appears that the attack was from um, Baron Pharaoh uh, made, made an assassination attempt on Josephus Agraki of the... Uh, of Baron Halley's estate while in the performing his duly appointed rounds as tax assessor. Okay. Um, Ox. You yes, sir. are in the bathroom. Well, I'm done now. I'll go back to the table. <laughs> okay. See if anybody wants to play dice. <laughs> So <laughs> nobody is interested in playing dice. In fact, they, they most of the people when this when this auto cannon opened up, they have dropped their beers. They they're not even interested in drinking anymore. They are laying flat, staying as far away from the window and door as possible, and just trying to survive. I'll bet you even up they won't shoot up another building. <laughs> and I'm getting down too, by the way. Okay. There's, we can still bet on this. <laughs> yeah, nobody's yeah. interested. Um, bodyguards. I bet Baron Farrell will do something because they blew up that building. He sounds like a better guy. This bodyguard goes here. This ground car uh, busts out. And it, it takes off with um, what is left of um, a Grocky and let's let's see if he's still hanging on. I'm curious. No, unfortunately, um, so Chingshi, you are then picking up reports that um, Josephus a Grocky has uh, been killed. Fantastic. This this car um, stays. The Parthenon or Parthian uh, moves here, and this guard moves here. They are going to sweep the build. What's left of the building, and uh, essentially. Uh, what happens is they sweep what's left of this building. Um, everybody that was in this building uh, is dead. Um, they do not find um, any evidence that... Um, they don't find any evidence that anybody was actually um, involved in the assassination. Um, but um, they can't rule it out either, of course. And so, um, they could question him. Oh, wait. <laughs> right. And so the, the paramilitary guards, um, kind of set up a cordon, um, around the town and you guys end up having to spend the night in the town. Um, Ching -Chi, did, uh, did the other Baron's troops ever show up? Uh, they did, but they realized that they were outnumbered. And so they kind of hung back and watched. Um, from a distance. Um, Ching Shi, when you get back to the ship, what is your plan? What are you doing? I'm just basically, I'm going to, you know, stow the gun, stow the battle dress, hide it, so that, you know, if the ship gets boarded because of violence in town, there's no evidence that I participated. And then just, like, you know, paint my nails and hang out eat some yeast protein and wait for everybody to come back. 
Okay, so you're you're uh, basically listening to the uh, radio chatter and local news. Yeah, so. just and and just have hiding hiding the evidence that I'm the shooter in one of our many cubbies that is search resistant and uh, waiting for everybody to come. Okay, you know, monitoring the situation, waiting for everybody to get there. So so two days goes by. Um, and you guys basically hunker down. Nobody's leaving their buildings for about two days before this all finally dies down. And the, the guard, the bodyguards and, uh, well, the bodyguards left a while ago, but it's mostly just paramilitary guards, um, and whatnot, um, continue to mill about this town, um, questioning locals, being dicks, roughing people up. Um, you guys are questioned, um, Keith and Beth make deception plus intellect checks, and let's see how well you do. So Keith got 12. Ooh. He's been hanging around that lying droid too much. <laughs> His astromech droid has killer deception. I got eight. Okay, so you were both successful. Um, you didn't have to worry about getting patted down and get having your weapons found. Um, the paramilitary guards, um, you know, think it's um, weird that you guys are, are that there's so many people living in this house, evidently. But uh, the family that you were hiding with, um, they. They tell the paramilitary guards that that Beth and Keith are um, are newlyweds, uh, newly wedded uh, a cousin. Uh, one of you is their cousin, and that you've you've come to stay with them. Um, the the paramilitary guards think it's really strange that you would have chosen to come here for your honeymoon, but you know they're they're not going to argue. Um, Ox it's because of the crippling taxes. Yes. Taxes have led to not having vacation option. Right, right, yeah. Credits. That was really nice of them. Holy shit. Yeah, definitely. Ox, you are questioned. Um, Ox, make a deception plus intellect check. Um, but because you are a Varger, um, you're going to get a minus two to your roll. Okay. Where did my sheet go? And God damn it! Like I said I hate how that uh, <laughs> one piece. There it is. Okay, minus two. Eight. Nice. So <clears throat> you are uh, able to basically bullshit your way through this um that you know uh, the 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 locals in the tavern back you up and uh you know because you're they think that you've been joking about wanting to play dice and cards with them during this entire <laughs> thing um and they they back you up <clears throat> saying that, you know, this is just a Varger merchant and, you know, stop harassing him. You guys are racist and blah, blah, blah. And so the paramilitary guards don't bother to search any further and they don't find your grenades hidden in the bathroom. I'm glad. And after two days, these guys all, the, the paramilitary leaves and um, um, nobody in town is sad that Agraki is dead. So where is Ox, Beth, and Clark, or Keith Clark? Are you going back to the ship? Are you going back to the Baroness Lex's castle? What are you? What are your plans? I mean, I would assume that you're probably in communication with Ching Shi. Although keep in mind that it is a cell phone network, so it might be better to go to the ship and then go back to the Baroness. The you know wash our trail. 
Yeah, let's do it. Let's go back to the ship. Okay. And I'm, uh, I'm going to take the last of my money that I have in cash and, uh, you know, buy rounds at the bar. Okay. So, yeah, Beth gives the, the, the family that she hid in their house, her and Keith, she gave them 70 credits. Ox buys everybody drinks. And uh, you guys are fairly well liked by a lot of people around this town. I mean, you know, uh, you might be outsiders, but hey, man, you, you guys are okay. Um, so you get back to the <coughs> ship and... Uh, Ching Shi, you you you've been waiting a couple of days. Really, no word because you guys haven't been talking on on the mobile comms, um, and you know Ching Shi, you didn't hear. I mean, you heard the the news that the town was locked down, but you had no idea whether these guys had been picked up or um, there was no indication either way. But you're happy to see them, of course. <clears throat> and uh, yes, and I'm and I'm going to wad up the piece of paper that said Captain Ching Shi on it in my handwriting with little heart and stuff all around it. I'm just going to be like, oh, you guys are here. Great. And throw it away. So we'll pick up next week with you guys uh, going back to Lux and, uh, you know, basking in the glory of your successful that was a really good shot uh, Ching Shi. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go. We'll uh, have you guys meeting back with Baroness Lux, and uh, learning how this traverses from here. And we'll pick that up next week at seven o'clock on Wednesday. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, everybody. All right. Have a good night, guys. All right.